Hello and welcome to the episode 109 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The second Mercy Beach showcase, some recording and mixing sessions, and an incredible marketing result are some of the things we will touch upon today. On the 19th of April 1961, the Beatles, featuring Pete Best on drums, performed at a top 10 club in Hamburg, West Germany. It was the second Beatle residency in Hamburg. And the third residency of the band in that German port was underway in 1962, with the Beatles, still with Pete Best in the lineup, having an evening performance at the Star Club. Moving on to 1963, we find the Beatles heading the bill in the second Mercy Beach showcase in the King's Hall in Stroke on Tent. It was the second event put together by their manager, Brian Epstein, to unite all the acts he managed in one night of entertainment. You can get more information on the first of these appointments checking out episode 66 of What A Fab Day. On the 19th of April 1964, the Beatles were at the IBC Studios in London to record a performance that they would have mimed during the Around the Beatles ITV special. The session didn't have a producer, although IBC's manager, Alan Stagg, was present. According to Beatles historian Mark Lewison, the Fabs arrived last in the early evening, after all the other acts had taped their performances. They recorded Twist and Shout, Roll Over Beethoven, I Wanna Be Your Man, Long Tall Sally, Can't Buy Me Love, and a medley of their early singles, Love Me Do, Please Please Me, From Me To You, She Loves You, I Want To Hold Your Hand. In addition, they added a number that they hadn't played since their rise to fame, Shout, a cover of the 1959 hit by the Eiley Brothers. A pristine version of the recording exists, but the miming of the performance during the broadcast of the show, on the 28th of April, was marred by the screams of the live audience. I Wanna Be Your Man, Long Tall Sally, Boys, and an edited version of Shout were released in the Anthology One album in 1995. Fun fact, the second engineer of the session was Glyn Jones, destined to work with the biggest names in the business and, as we have seen in the January episode of this very podcast, to engineer the Get Back sessions some five years down the line. In addition, Derek Taylor, having left the Daily Express on Friday the 17th of April 1964, started to work for NEMS today. And today is a good day to check out www.simonmas.com support and find out how you can help me to put out more music-related content with an eye on increasing its quality. Even years down the line, no donation will be too small and any other help will be much appreciated. Be fab and choose to make the difference to support the content you enjoy. 1966. Between 2.30 pm and midnight, the Beatles worked on the completion of Dr. Robert at the EMI Studios in London. With all the instruments recorded on the 17th of April, the band recorded all the vocals of the song. Automatic double tracking was applied to every one of the vocal tracks to thicken them and three mono mixes were produced for the Beatles to take home. Two events of notice took place on the 19th of April 1967. At some point during the day, the Beatles and Co. was formed. The firm was basically an umbrella company formed for tax reasons and to better control all the various financial enterprises of the band. Each Beatles owned 5% of the new company, with the remaining 80% controlled collectively. This meant that apart from songwriting royalties, administered through Northern songs and paid directly to the authors of a given song, all the money earned by the band was channeled into the Beatles & Co. and was thus subject to a much lower tax rate than it would have if it had been paid to individuals according to the British revenue tax law of the time. The Beatles & Co. covered all the activities of the Beatles, as a group or as solo artists, for the following 10 years. This was de facto the precursor of Apple Corps. In addition, between 7.00 pm and 12.30 am, 
George Martin and Jeff Emerick created another monomix of Good Morning, Good Morning to ease its fading into the Surgeon Pepper's reprise track. The task was achieved by merging the final hand sounds with the first guitar note in Surgeon Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band reprise, a solution that required 14 mixes to be achieved. Before the end of the session, Martin and Emmerich also mixed only a northern song in mono, for reference purposes only. Finally, in 1968, Apple Music placed an advert in the major players in the music press, calling for demo tapes from unsigned artists. In the advert, above a copy written after an idea from Paul McCartney, Apple's general manager Alistair Taylor was pictured as a one-man band, under the title This Man Has Talent. The response from the public was overwhelming, with over 400 tapes received in the first week alone, but only a handful of demos were actually listened to, and not one single contract was signed as a result of this move from Apple. And I guess this leads us to the conclusion of this episode. Tune in tomorrow for more stories from the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.